And welcome to the Saturday morning wake-up call right here on KFAR. It is brought to you in part by Far North Tactical over there at the corner of 8th and Lacey. Guaranteed to get you ready for the coming zombie apocalypse. Well, and if you don't believe the zombie apocalypse is upon us yet, you can at least prepare yourself against a home invasion over there. Uh, also brought to you by Bighorn Enterprises, where, uh, when performance matters. You can give those guys a call for dirt hauling, or you know what, if you need to haul one state to another, they can do that too. They can pick up all of Texas and move it up somewhere into uh, Alaska if they need to. All right, uh, Josh Bennett try. actually is here. He's uh, one of the, the owners of Bighorn and uh, the sponsor of the show. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. You know, we were just talking before we started this, the show here about uh, how many people we know that are sick right now. And wouldn't it be interesting if liberty would spread like a disease? You know, if people would catch the virus and, and become infected with this idea of liberty. And spread and then, it to and others? Pass it on. To, uh, you know, and I, I think to a certain degree it is something that spreads. However, we've been inoculated against it. You, you look at how many people you know that whether they went through a public school system or whether they, you know, just in terms of their work, uh, how much interaction they have with the state on every level. You know, you, you, you sit through, a, and you just go with school alone, you sit through six hours a day plus of having people tell you how great our system is, having people tell you these are the rules for recess, having people tell you that this is community property over here, you, you you keep your own stuff inside your desk right here, and then all of this out here, this belongs to all of us collectively. I, I mean, you get what I'm saying, right? I mean, it, yeah. it, it's hard once you get trained. But uh, not only that, now, I mean, at least what I've read, I, I don't have any kids in public school, but now it's not only that they just tell us how great it is now, but they, they tell, they badmouth how it began. They badmouth the revolutionaries back in the day. Um, you know, our revolutionaries. So, yeah, it's definitely uh, something that's squashed. It's pretty encouraging. Um, you know, Ron Paul finally admitted that he's not going to get the uh, needed delegates for the presidential nomination. What? No way. I totally <laughs> thought he had a chance. <laughs> but Even if he got all the delegates, the guy didn't have a chance. But uh, it was it, I personally have been really encouraged with his movement, though. I mean, he had a uh, pretty strict libertarian, liberty-minded movement, and it's gone. Uh, it went viral this last time. I mean, it really did. What's going to be interesting is now that uh, he basically is out of it. Oh, I don't think he'll ever be out of it. He's basically out of this race. It'll be interesting to see what those people do from there, where they go from there. I know I've had just this last week several conversations with friends of mine. What are we going to do now? What do we do? And, uh, yeah, what do we do? I think uh, Randy Redrick, you know, we've talked about it a little bit. He, the current Republican chairman gave us a really good idea when he told – he sent emails out for this reconvening of the convention in Anchorage that's today. He sent emails out telling people the best thing they could do is to not participate. So – Obviously, this guy who's been in the system all his life, he is part of the system. He knows the power of not participating. If you don't participate, <laughs> A, B, and C will fail. So maybe uh, what we need to do is not participate in the public uh, arena of politics. Seems like a very, pretty good idea to me. It's obviously... Randy Redrick says it's a good idea, so well, the reason I mean, why that guy's pretty smart. Okay. <laughs> Before you go for, too far down this path, because I, I, I'm part of me really agrees wholeheartedly that we we need to withdraw our consent and let and and expose the system for what it is as, as tyranny. It, it is not, uh, e even if it's a tyranny of the majority, it is not what our founders envisioned in terms of being a representative republic where the rights of the minority are preserved. That that certainly is not what we have now. Right now, if you get enough people to come together and raise their voices loud enough, no matter on, on what level it is, whether it's the city or the borough or the state or the federal level, you can get pretty much anything passed. So, I mean, it gets, it's just a matter of time before they start rounding up people and putting stars on their chest, you know, whether, whether it's about uh, a, a particular racial background or a particular philosophical background. I'm sorry, sir, you need to be contained and so we're going to go and we're going to put you in a particular, we're, we're just going to relocate you. Philosophical background, especially. Look yeah. at uh, Schaefer Cox. 
who I think was being a loudmouth. But, uh, you know, I've been reading, following the uh, trial a little bit when, when I can on the Internet, which obviously I'm not at the trial, so take it for what you can when you're reading it out of a paper. But those guys got picked up for philosophical belief. Part of it was a loudmouth, but part of it also was a philosophical belief that they had, that they uh, – an impending – demise of the federal government was going to come economic collapse was going to come and they basically for the most part wanted to preserve themselves i mean i know there's way more to it than that but at the core that's what it started out as well there there are a whole lot of people that would agree with that i mean if you Mm -hmm. look at the number of people that were coming to the rallies like with the second amendment task force and the, I think they had a big event over there at the Carlson Center, you know, several thousand people in Fairbanks that would turn out for some of these rallies and for some of these meetings about that idea of being prepared against the possibility of having uh, our, our way of life completely gone, believing basically at its core that our government is doomed. Yeah, there are a lot I, of people that believe that. I wonder if part of the... Uh resistance that the state has from that isn't just the uh, preparedness part but i wonder how much of it is don't even think that surf we will always be here surf don't prepare for an eventual collapse we will never collapse surf we will always be here anybody that's going to come out here and think otherwise we're going to put the little squash Squash the apple. Let me tell you how things work around here, Josh. This yeah. Is, this is, this, we are the ones who will do this, that, or the other thing, and we will always be the one who will do this. And for you to think otherwise is to show not only your ignorance, but your youth and inexperience, sir. Wow. Has that found something familiar to you at all? Yeah, lately. All right. Just lately. I, but, I, it, uh, it, I can't go... I know you can't give a lot of details about some of the things that have happened to you, but I've I've seen that. I've heard that on a number of different levels as well. There is a certain institutionalized uh, attitude that is very similar to what you saw in the Soviet Union. Oh, yeah. It, very similar to what you saw in the Soviet Union. And then you look at what happens in a place like Wisconsin, where the governor comes in and says, you know what? This whole collective bargaining by the unions is hamstringing the state. Um, we're going to end that. And so he does, and what are the, of course the unions are like, no, you can't do that. And they get their whole, uh, they gin up the, uh, what do you call Opposition. it? Well, I mean, they they get the, that that mob mentality going, and they go, and we're going to recall. They do this, so it looks like it's going to be really close, and in the end, they failed. They failed, but they failed to not. I mean, it wasn't a huge margin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all of these Republican talking heads and Sean Hannity and these other people. Well, oh, it's a great day for democracy. It shows how President Obama is going to lose. And you know what? You need to pull your head out, son. It is not about a particular man or a particular party. It's about how our very, the very fabric of our society is so underrated right now that people do not understand that if you get, if you continue to perpetuate that idea of if we get enough people in our mob, then we'll win, then you have missed what America was all about. Well, it's the whole reason why we have what little freedom we have, right? The whole reason we have what little freedom we have is because we keep giving milk to the master, the cows. And as long as we keep doing that, we just have just enough. I mean, we have just enough economic freedom to produce wealth to have it stolen from us. We have just enough political freedom to vote our guy in. And I hope that a lot more people this go around with the presidential election will finally see the futility of it and just finally say enough. Enough of this. I'm not going to participate in this anymore. I mean, what choices do we have? We're, We're given... Two people, Obama or Romney. The only differences are the name tags in front of their name, or the little nut letters in front of their name, Democrat or Republican. Tastes great, less filling. How about none of them? I don't know. It's frustrating. It's yeah. so frustrating. And people are going to be frustrated. I mean, the the big the collapse of, I guess, the liberty movement's coming up because... Uh, of Ron Paul, P- too many people put their faith in that whole thing, and now it's just it's sad because people are going to be like, oh my gosh, we failed again. There's no hope. What do we do? Well, there was never any hope. Putting your hope into a political system, putting your hope into something that they will never 
let go of. I mean, do we really think that we as the serfs have power enough to change the people that actually have the power, that own the guns, that have the force? They'll never willingly ever get up that power. We'll never change that. We have to just get to the point where we realize we are serfs. We're done. We're illegitimate little citizens. They are the masters. They own us. They own everything that we have. They will take whatever they we they want, anything that we have that they feel like they can take, they will. We, what? We're screwed. How about that? <laughs> we are screwed as long as we perpetuate this thing because we are nothing. They do not care about us. I mean, look at your... Look at the representatives that are running locally now. I mean, they keep getting these stupid uh, flyers from them, which I'm trying to unsubscribe as fast as I can to all of them. You get these flyers, and they all say, you know, put put Alaskans back to work. We're going to get clean energy. We're going to get affordable energy now. We're going to do this and that. All these litmus test things that they spend out of both sides of their mouth and both sides say the it, same both thing. parties both parties you can get a, a, a you can get a party postcard from either side and they're going to say exactly the same thing exactly and none of them not <laughs> one of these things even mention one thing like follow your oath of office or i will protect your property rights or whatever nothing along those lines at all because they don't care because we don't care but we just need to get to the point where we need to get to the point where we don't care about what they say, what they do, what they're promising. We need to just get it inside ourselves. We're going to be a free people without you guys. We're but going I, to withdraw our consent from the stupid nine people across the river at the borough assembly. I don't care what you guys think you are. I don't care what you're going to do anymore. We withdraw our consent. You know how great it would be if no one showed up at those meetings? They're like so illegitimate that no one showed up. No one cared. I'm like, oh, well, we just passed a lot of whatever. So. Kind of reminds me of you. you no mentioned... one even talked about it on the radio. Yeah. No one even put it in the paper, right? Could you imagine if the news miner didn't even publish one story that the borough did? They were so illegitimate because everyone withdrew their consent from them that they could do whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted, and no one cared. Kind of reminds me, you mentioned Schaefer Cox at the beginning. It kind of reminds me of his little court that he set up. <laughs> you, you, are you familiar? You know yes. what he did? I mean, he uh -huh. basically declared a court and convened some people and held court over there in Denny's and passed a judgment on the state. And nobody cared because it's he doesn't have a legitimacy. Right. He, he does not have the will of the people. You know, and the, um, when is the last time you read the Declaration of Independence? The, the, mm, a couple uh, weeks. All right. I the reason probably more often than most people do. But let me just can I read you just the the very first part of it here? Yeah, go for it. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that's where it should have stopped. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't, but that's where it should have stopped. Well, it goes I mean, on, they could have just declared that. And that to secure done. these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Now, it goes on, what a lot of people don't understand, that the, the, the rest of it is basically, it's a list of complaints against King George. Right. It, the, the reasons for why they say, look, he, had, he is an illegitimate government. These are the reasons why we are no longer obeying. It's not, they, they didn't just come together in, in Philadelphia and say, hey guys, what do you say we have a revolution? They came together and they talked about how the, the current form of government was illegitimate, and they outlined in this way, he's broken faith with the people. 
in this way. And it goes on, line after line after line. And I, I just wonder if people really understand how similar these things that, that King George did are to what... Um, <clears throat> King George would be great right now. Well, I mean, you just listen to some of these things that he did that, that they they were complaining against. He refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. In other words, he refused to sign legislation that would have been beneficial. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people, and thus those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislature. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose, obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. He has obstructed the administration of justice. He has made judges dependent on his will alone. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat out their substance. He yeah, has, that's a good one right there. He has kept among us in times of peace standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. Oh, but we have the consent of our legislatures now. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. Is that the EPA? Or is that yeah, but I think <clears throat> the problem with this, we're losing. I think people are just going to, people are listening to that and going, yep, that's why we got to get rid of Obama. But we got to get in uh, Mitt yeah. Romney because he won't do any of that. But the yeah. very first part of that declaration Governors deri- governments derive their authority from the consent of the people. Withdraw consent. That's the whole point exactly. of it. Withdraw the consent. Exactly. Unfortunately, they wanted to establish their alter and abolish and establish new forms of government. I say alter and abolish and just end it there. Why have a new form of government? I mean, we have proven over and over and over there is no such thing as a good government. There's no such thing as a small government. It's impossible to have a limited government. It will not happen. Withdraw your consent. Withdraw, I mean, going back to this borough over here, if no one cared about anything they said, what a happy day that would be. It would be hilarious. Well, the borough, I mean, you wouldn't even know they were passing laws. Back in 1780 or 1760, well, after the revo- right after the revolution, no one cared they didn't even know what was going on in Philadelphia because no one cared. They actually didn't even give them their consent. That was actually kind of a little forced on thing. But if we would just, I mean, people that call in, people that call me or friends I talk to, they, what do we do? It's really simple. We have to just convince people through education, talking to people, this show, day to day, withdraw your consent. Just quit doing it. I would really encourage people to quit going to the borough and wasting your time and giving them the legitimacy of your time. Well, there are lots of ways, though, that we continue to give them our consent, even if we don't go and attend their meetings. Because I haven't attended a meeting in, oh, I don't know, maybe a decade in terms of having been here and actually going to it. There have been occasional times when I have gone with my pitchfork and torch. You know, when I've gotten so upset at at a particular issue that I'll go down and join with other voices and saying, you want you want us to bring back tar and feathering because we're right. going to do it. Uh, and there have been a certain number of times that have gotten me out on that. But generally speaking, I don't really give a, a, a rat's patootie about what goes on in any of these legislative bodies. However, I still pay my taxes. And, and a lot of that is, is just simple self-preservation. Well, sure. You I don't want them to come and take my house away from me. <laughs> you don't want to get uh, thrown in a cage. Uh, yeah, but, but that's why I said it takes a lot of people. It would take a majority of people to withdraw consent. And what's funny about that majority is that they wouldn't be pushing their idea or their 
forcing anyone else into anything. They would just be not consenting, not going along with anything anymore. The borough would be a simple start, and we can't. I mean, they don't even have police powers. And I don't even think they care when you go in there and you beg and you whine or you say, we're going to rah, rah, rah. I think they get they enjoy that because well, they sit there up on their little thrones exactly. looking down on you going, yeah, whatever, surf. When you come in we'll to lick their feet, then, then you're proving to them that they do have the power over you. Oh, well, look at the Occupy Fairbanks people as an example. Yeah. They How, did. What did it take for the borough to get them out of that park? It took, I don't even know it, what ever happened to well, that. Well, what happened was they came and they threatened to sue and said, you need to leave now or we're going to bring you up on and, you know, give you a lawsuit here. Got racketeering charges And or it's, uh, basically the the kids, I mean, because it was, it was a couple of 20-something kids that were doing this. Yeah. Uh, and, and some very intelligent 20-something kids because what they did in order to maintain their presence is they went out and they got some homeless people to help them actually occupy that space. Yeah, they did a great job. Uh, I mean, the, My hats were off to them. I mean, they uh, basically rebelled. They pushed the they, system. But they and proved they did that it. the borough doesn't have any power. And at some point, they finally just said, I'm tired of doing this. Yeah. Because they did not have enough support from the public at large to well, keep yeah, doing it. Well, yeah, because the people were ticked off at them. Not, what was funny, not philosophically with their message. They were just ticked off that they were there. I mean, I had philosophical differences with the, differences with the guys, Absolutely. but I was glad that they were out there pushing the buttons, pushing I, the envelope. That was great. What I, what really made me uh, no laugh. tea parties ever exactly. come close to that. Exactly. What made me laugh the most about the whole situation is to hear how many people say, "Well, they can't do that. Well, why not? Well, because they don't have permission to do that. So, well, if I went and tried to do it, I'd get thrown in jail. Well, then why aren't you out there with them? I'd buy my permit. I'd buy, I heard that so many times. Well, I'd, I'd buy a permit and do it right. Why is that right? That's absolutely wrong. Asking the government per, permission to give redress to them, to come up with doesn't, something to say, that, hey, knock this. I mean, you're talking about our founding documents, the, the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, the first ten amendments has to do specifically with that. Very first amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. If you have to get a permit to assemble... Yeah, that says that Congress shall not, but uh, hasn't, apparently they hasn't have. Hasn't your huh? freedom been abridged? Yeah. And they, yet, how many of... I mean, the people just take this line down all the time. Go and try to have a parade without a permit. Go to a Tea Party Parade where they're flying around, don't tread on me flags and come and take it flags and all this and that, and they got a permit. Yeah. And they're bad mouthing the guys that said, no, we're not going to get a permit. We have the right to protest, and we're going to protest as long as we feel necessary. They had the right to do that. Yeah, exactly. And supposed liberty loving minded folks were bad mouthing them and trashed them. It's too bad the whole city didn't back them up. But of course, we're just get back to the point where we're just a bunch of stinking serfs, well, and, slaves and to the state. The question that keeps, coming, like that. that keeps coming to my mind on this is where is your hope? Because if your hope is in somehow a political solution, then you're going to stay within those political boundaries. Yeah, how long, how, how well has that been working out? <laughs> you're going you're gonna to keep on supporting <laughs> Republican or Democrat. You're going to keep on putting your money into these ridiculous campaigns that basically all they do is make advertisers, I mean, people like the media, make, makes us rich. Right. Which, by the way, uh, I've got absolutely no problem with on a philosophical <laughs> level. I will take your money, absolutely no problem uh, for advertisement. Yeah, but think of all the time and effort and money that people spend into that that they could put in their own time. Exactly. And, and go it, on a vacation. Yeah. Go on a fishing trip. Do something worthwhile. Don't it, give money to a party. You know, Randy Redrick told people to not go to the Alaska Constitution, the, the Republican Constitution this weekend, or the convention this weekend, and to, instead he suggested that they give their money to a Republican candidate. Right. Well, you know what? I, take it a step farther. Don't give your money to a Republican candidate. Don't give your money to any candidate and take that money and go spend some time with your family. Well, they're such hypocrites. I mean, they're such hypocrites. It drives me nuts because they, uh, you know, their whole thing is democracy, right? right? Well, they're all for it until a mob, we'll call it a mob, a bigger set of uh, more people come out and push their guy out and uh so they lose under the democratic process so eh, well, we're not going to play anymore look Why? what happened just what was it last week or two weeks ago when gvea had that little protest against the northern environmental center 
they were all excited because they had 100 plus people come out to show up to protest against the environmentalist people. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The environmentalist people turned out just as many. <laughs> so that they were I mean, roughly, I mean, I, I wasn't there. I didn't so see you're it. Go out the with a state ground, monopoly, you're going to go out with a state monopolized power company who's there. Just, I mean, right. they have a state monopoly. Exactly. And protest a environmentalist group right that makes a lot of sense well the, the, yeah. but the environmentalists are the ones that are standing in the way of progress because they're keeping the permits who gives the permits who gives the environmentalists legitimacy that's a good question the state does four five eight talk is the number our, all of our lines are on hold we'll come right back and go to the phones right here on kfar as we continue only station all right welcome back to the shadow your morning wake-up call right here on kfar i'm steve floyd the monkey behind the machine joining me on the opposite side of the counter here is josh bennett one of our sponsors here through bighorn enterprises hello all right josh you ready to go back to the phones uh, i wanted or, to or just go, to go back phones. really quick to this epa thing that we're talking about gva and right. epa right so we have the government not monopolized Electric company. That makes a lot of sense. So we're out there protesting for them because our our uh, power rates are too high <laughs> for them, right? Our power mm -hmm. rates are too high. We're going to go protest for them. So we're going to protest against environmentalists who are basically the only legitimacy they have is the government gives them legitimacy, right? The court wasn't it the court with uh, Healy? They said the only way the court said the only way the Healy coal plant is going to open up is if you make the environmentalists happy. So once uh, I don't think it's Greenpeace, which I don't remember which one it is. So once they're happy with whatever they're trying to get out of the whole thing, once they're happy, then the state says, okay, then you, once they're happy, you can open up this coal plant. I think there, there so were like have, five groups that joined together to to pro to more, file yeah, suit, I'm and, sure and, and then the big one that they were protesting was the Northern Alaska Environmental Center over there on uh, College Road. So, I okay. mean, that's, that's kind of the ones that were spearheading the. Well, if the state didn't legitimize. The the uh, power the environmentalist we wouldn't have to worry about them would we but we'd still have a government monopolized electric company mm -hmm. I mean do they let any competition in here on that and do you really think that GVA's sad about the rates that they're charging us well think about do you it think the guys that are mm -hmm. and I don't have a bad you know, they can make as much money as they want even though they're non profit the guys at the top they're making four or five six hundred thousand dollars a year I mean that's great but they have a government monopoly. So why? Who, which one do we protest? Mm -hmm. Okay, we go protest for GVA. We go protest the environmentalist. Both of them have a government mm -hmm. monopoly. They're legitimized by the state. So quit throwing. I mean, we whine about the, the big uh, oil companies all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But who's the problem behind that? The state. So who's the monopoly given to GVA by the state? How is the EPA legitimized? Or not the EPA, well, yeah, them too. Yeah. But how are the environmentalists legitimize? The state. The state is the underlying problem with every single stinking problem we have. They are the inventors of that problem. But who to is keep the, the chaos going? Who because is the we, state, though? I mean, the, the state. The bureaucracy. It, but it's it's people. It's, right. it's people that we yield our authority to. It's people that, that tell us, no, you have to do things this way. And we say, okay. okay. Yeah, but so as long as they keep this going, I mean, it's just a big circle. They're helping all the sides. It's kind of like in World War II when you had banks giving money to Germany and they were giving money to the United States or World War I or how about even the Civil War when German banks were giving money to the South and the North, right? You help all the sides to keep the chaos and the confusion going when ultimately you're the problem in the first place. But I don't understand why people can't understand that. I it boggles my mind. I hear people call your show all the time, and they say, "Wow, if so, so, well, where did that problem start out? The state." Well, think about this. Just but in, we need in, them. If you went out into a remote community here in in Fairbank in the Fairbanks area, let's say you go out on the other side of Fox, they, they, you go up toward or or someplace where there's no roads mm -hmm. and there's no electricity, and you decide to homestead. You go out there and you build a house. Are you just going to sit there and say, oh, gee, I don't have any electricity. Doggone it. I can't have my computer. Or are you going to figure out a way to get your own power? Depends on how Cause you much know what? you, you can, really want you it. Can, but if you do, you will get your you own can, power. I mean, you can go right over there to, uh, what is it called? Alaska Battery? Yeah, Alaska ABS, Battery. ABS? ABS. Right over there off of Banhorn Road. You can go over plug. there and you can get a whole bunch. Free plug, by the way. You can get everything from battery systems to windmills. 
to solar power, solar power, yep. all, ki- all kinds of ways that you can make power on your own for your own house. I actually have this big generator. I've been contemplating. I got to do the numbers on it, but I think right now it'd be cheaper to run my diesel generator mm-hmm. than to buy power from the state monopoly. And yet, if you did that, even because you're on the grid, right. if you did that here in the Fairbanks area on the grid, you'd end up putting power back into the system. Right. And guess how much you'd get uh, com- uh, compensated for that? Not much. I don't think anything. I, no, I think they have to buy it, don't they? I don't know if I get to charge them as much as they charge me, and I'd know for a fact I wouldn't get to stick them with that fuel surcharge that's double what your usage charge no. is. But, but I mean, if, I if, we, if, we, didn't, if we didn't but, have people that just came and said, hey, where do I plug in my electric car, <laughs> and actually started thinking about where the power comes from, and started thinking about how to make their own power instead of coming and, and saying, make power for us. Well, if you did too much of that, then the state would step in and stop exactly. it. Exactly. Because they've got their monopoly. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. This is the Saturday morning wake-up call. You still with us? All right, we cleared the yes. lines. There it goes. All right. Uh, we'll the, take calls. You the call lines are open. We will take calls now. 458-TALK, 458-8255. I'm tired of listening to ourselves whine. I'm never tired of... Oh, I am tired of listening to you whine. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm not really whining either. I'm just saying, let's get on with this thing. Let's, well, when are we going to withdraw some consent here and have some fun? <laughs> I mean, you know how much life would be, how less stressful life would be is if every time you read the paper, every time you listen to the radio, what is it? The thing that that overwhelms every news story, every magazine, everything is the state. They're in every part of our lives, not just, you know, physically a part of our lives, mentally. They're constantly there. And all we have to do is just say, that's enough. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston, Winston. go ahead. How you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. I always appreciate when you call in. Uh, 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 thank you. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, he, uh, uh, he considered himself a member of the uh, 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 of the yeomans, you know, or not a member of the yeomans, but uh, of the yeoman class. Uh, 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 part of the problem with our our government is the fact that it, it it's it's monopolistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, under the king, uh, they were four classes of people. Uh, uh, there was the the royalty, then there was the nobles, and then there were the tenants. But then there were the yeomen, and the yeomen were were freeholders. They 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 owned their own land. Uh, uh, they could serve on juries, and they could uh, when they had a vote for. I, I would assume it's like a sheriff, uh, a constable, or whatnot. Uh, he could vote. And but the assembly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, he he uh, 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 he had no dealings whatsoever with the uh, uh, with the king. Uh, 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 or with anybody. I mean, it was uh, the tenants made the money for the nobles to pay the taxes to the king. Uh, uh, and the old men just sat out there. They didn't. Uh, uh, they were just small, uh, 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 self-sufficient people. You know, uh, 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 subsistence and and a little better. Uh, and it just uh, uh, most all those kingdoms and all they all had these little people, these outlaws that uh, that were legal outlaws. Uh, uh, they uh, you can't tell these people that are dependent on the state that they can't have the state. What we got to do is, uh, my way of thinking, is tell them say, well, okay, you can have your state, but leave me alone. <laughs> uh, 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 you take Alaska now. Uh, 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 I, 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 I'm not happy with the state of Alaska, uh, with the government of it. But we do have one great advantage here. We have the boroughs, organized and unorganized. If you want to be in an organized borough and and put up with all the bull crap and, and stuff of that nature, uh, uh, go for it. Uh but if you want to be more independent and 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 uh, have to deal with your neighbors and uh, 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 stuff like that, you can live outside the borough. Yeah, you can vote with your feet and move away well, from. Uh, 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 I called in Michael Duke a, week, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 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 
actually you can go through the local boundary commission and uh, uh, if you live inside a borough, uh, uh, you can get enough of your neighbors together, you can petition to be drawn out of the borough. I would love that. You know, you brought up a really good point when you said uh, it's hard to get people that are so um, dependent on the government to say, let's get rid of it, because obviously they're not going to. They they survive off of it. Right. So a, a good point along that line, you said, yeah, so you guys can have your state, but uh, I don't want it. That goes along with uh, when we had uh, Stefan Molyneux on a couple last week, I guess it was, and uh, he made the, a great point of, that's fine. If you wish to pay for this, if you wish to go through that, I don't have a problem with that. Go ahead. Now, since I'm willing to let you have what you want, let me have what I want. Leave me alone. I don't right. want to be a part of that system. But, you know, people aren't going to go for that, are they? Even though you're willing to let them have what they want, they're sure as heck not going to let you have what you want, which is even more simple, just to be left alone. How simple is that? Yeah. Obviously, not very simple. Well, I mean, even on the issue of the unorganized borough, Winston, that's only for as long as they continue to allow you to be in the unorganized borough. I mean, think about when the Fairbanks North Shore Borough was founded in 19, what was it, 64? It was done so with a, the people had a vote, and the people in Fairbanks said no. We do not want to have an organized borough. And the state came back and said, sorry, yes, you do. And at that oh, no. point, and that point, the local people kind of gave up and said, well, as long as we have to have a borough, we may as well have elections. Yeah, if they would have yep. just ignored it, just completely oh, no, ignored no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Actually, what, uh, where, they, where they dropped the ball at, there were a group of people in Fairbanks that desperately wanted a borough. And, uh, and so as soon as the state said, well, you have to have one, uh, uh, they put them in debt. If if the yeah, if right. people had a, 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 a held up and and made them uh, uh, stay out of debt for a, 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 for another election cycle, then they could have voted it out. Even then, but once they went into debt, then they couldn't vote out. Yeah, they gave it their consent. I mean, right, they could have right. just—they could have just not complied. They could have just not given their consent, and what would have happened? It would have disappeared. Right. This stuff uh, only exists because of us. That's the well, only uh, reason it's uh, there. Right. Because we allow other people to. Uh, I was involved in the uh, 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 the no borough fight in in Delta, and uh, 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 for a long time it looked awful shaky, but. Uh, uh, there are people that uh, 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 they don't want to work for themselves. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, uh, they want the government there to do it for them. Yeah, it's a great racket. It's a great racket. Uh, all right, and like I say, uh, uh, I just thought I'd, I'd, uh, Thomas Jefferson had, had was was really good on his ideas, and. Um, uh, uh, and I, 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 I like the, the the yeoman society, you know, the yeoman class. And that's the way we all ought to be. All right. Thanks, Winston. Appreciate the phone call. 458-TALK is another one. other thing to consider, too, is that the, the borough here can expand basically anytime it wants to or the people in office want it to. I mean, you remember when Jim Whitaker a couple of years ago? As long as people give him their consent. Exactly. And he didn't get the consent of the people to do it, but he wanted to. He proposed having the Fairbanks North Star Borough going all the way up to the Yukon River. Four five eight talk. Another thing to consider is that Mr. Geisel has. Oh yeah, that's right. Welcome, Dave. And, and Dave, Dave Geisel has uh, now slunk in the back there. He's about to. My s- cover's been blown. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Welcome to the show here. All right, four five eight talk. We will force you to be involved. <laughs> is the number. Good morning, caller. You have now been made a part of the show, whether you liked it or not. Good morning. Who's this? Uh, hi. Hey, uh, who is this? This is Rick. Rick, thanks for calling. What's your, on your mind? Hey, Josh. How hey, are you doing? Rick, thanks yeah. for calling in, man. Hey. Good. Hey, I just wanted to comment on uh, the thing you were talking about earlier um, regarding uh, the environmental movement and our Golden Valley uh, or electrical company and, uh, you know, how it's us versus them, you know, that type of mentality, it, which is basically comes down to divide and conquer. Yeah. And, and that is, you know, that's their whole... Um, method of turning us into slaves. You know, that's uh, division leads to separation, separation leads to weakness, weakness leads to serfdom. 
And it's worked out pretty good for him. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. And uh, I just, you know, one of the things I was uh, reading this morning was a, uh, a deal by Von Mises uh, from Human Action, where he says, government is a last resort, is in the last resort, the employment of armed men, of policemen, gendarmes, soldiers, prison guards, and hangmen. The essential feature of government is the enforcement of its decrees by beating, killing, and imprisoning. Those who are asking for more government interference are asking ultimately for more compulsion and less freedom. And I think that's what it boils down to. I mean, that's why I did not go down to the convention this weekend. I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm here in Fairbanks still. So. I figured you must have been. We we talked about this this week. It's uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's right on the money, man. Yeah. Well, that, that's really kind of all I had to say. I just, uh, you know, I'm right with you there, so. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Appreciate the phone call. 458-TALK okay. is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? It's me. It might be you. Depends on who it is. This is Trill. Trill. Guess what? It is you. Go ahead. Yeah. I had a number of things I wanted to talk to. One, the, the uh, separation of uh, people from their jurisdiction to move them to a foreign jurisdiction be tried. That was a Schaefer Cox, and before that was a Peace Boys that moved to Anchorage away from their jurisdiction so they could get a conviction. <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. But the federal government, of course, comes back and says, well, we have jurisdiction everywhere. So yeah. Alaska is still in the area that they live, supposedly. No, I, I agree wholeheartedly. They were supposed to be tried right here in Fairbanks. Yeah. As, as to the borough, you know, the, the, the people that... Uh, registered to vote and voted on the issue, they all voted to be taxed. I'm making a difference if they voted for it or against it. They voted to be taxed. And the uh, people that use government issued identification or leased identification, they all fall under that heading. You're governed not you giving consent once you use that government issued identification. They all capitalize fictitious name, corporate entity name. You can go, go to Alaska statute and look that up. It says man, woman, child, names all the different corporations, and then it says and corporate entity. So, <clears throat> so that's where you stand. And I'm forced to use that government issued identification because 1959 I signed up for a Social Security number, and under that Social Security number come that all capitalized name. And I was too dumb, and stupid at the time, not to send it back to them. Now, Trill, do you, do you think there's some kind of a magic involved when they put your names in all caps? Well, it's a fictitious name. All capital letters are nouns. And they're designed to have a designator between them. And <clears throat> all numbers and groups of numbers are nouns, and they're required to have a designator. If groups of numbers weren't nouns, you'd never get past the number nine. Well, you, remember, you remember several years ago when they took the, uh, on the computers, they said, well, we're eliminating the designators to save computer space. You remember that? Uh, no. No, honestly, I I I, 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 uh, I know where you're coming from here, and I'm just going to have to disagree because whether they put your name in, and I I believe me, I understand exactly what you're saying. I've been through this. Just because they put your name capitalized or they write your whole name in lowercase, you are still not free either way. I mean, your the basis of your freedom, your liberty, has nothing to do with what. They classify you as. It's all because they just have force, a monopolized force, to throw you in jail. That's all it comes down to. All this other stuff, I mean, do you really think you're more free if you revoke your signature, you revoke your driver's license, you revoke this and that? You're no you're no more free doing that than you are with having them. I mean, because you know, you know, when you they can throw court, you in a cage no matter what. When you go to court, you're required to be represented. And you can either represent yourself, move yourself into third-party category, and go pro per, pro se, pro se. proper persona, yep. be an honorary, temporary member of the bar, <clears throat> but you cannot go as yourself. Same thing with voter registration. You cannot vote as yourself. Well, you're go as well as actually, though, the pro, pro se and the, all that, that's saying that you're you're there as your proper person. 
but what does it matter? I mean, who, who cares? I mean, whether you're, however you're thinking that you're representing yeah, they, yourself, they don't have any power over rabbit, you because a, they put your name in one way or the other. What gives them power over you is you saying, oh, man, because they put my name in caps, now they've got power over me. And going into court and you sign your paperwork or whatever, and I, I know what you're saying, you know, you know, when you file your paperwork, you say Joshua Bennett, improper persona. All that means is Joshua Bennett in my proper person. You are going as yourself, supposedly. I know I, I know the sovereignty movement inside and out. I was involved in it for way too long. How many people know what person is? How many, how many people know what resident is? But what does it matter? I mean, you can say, you can get all these different things. You can call a rabbit a dog and do whatever. It doesn't change the fact that it doesn't matter any of that stuff. Freedom through well, paperwork. If it, didn't, if it didn't matter, they wouldn't do it. Ah, it, it, uh, but it doesn't. It, it, in 1980, when when the state uh, DOT Department of Driver's License changed all the names to all caps, body people aren't old enough to remember that, but I do remember that. Yeah, but you know what? You sh- could still you could still have. Isn't the you problem that you're a getting a driver's before. license in the first place, Trio? I mean, what if you didn't have a driver's license? Would well, would your car Josh not has work? A, this, don't you have like an interesting story relating to that, where how, you oh, you didn't you didn't this. have a driver's license and they still um. Yeah, I did still all. You away. I did that whole little little old thing. I mean, you've done all the magic there. spells and everything, and you still ended up in jail. Didn't I you? went to jail. How about, how about this? Who don't care. They how about don't. This? They, uh, sometime here in this past legislative session, they passed a rule, and, and Parnell signed it into law that you had to have government issued identification in order to cash a check, or use a debit card, or use a credit card. I found that out a couple of days ago from Napa. It's against the law not to have government issued identification in order to use cash a check, use a debit card, or use a credit card. Now, <clears throat> if it's mandatory, there can be no unfunded mandata- mandates. So, if it's mandatory, the state has to pay for it. Think about that. Bye. All right, Drill. Thanks very much. Uh, you know, I, I, I love you. Have to love do. you like a brother. But you know what? Seriously, sometimes I I cannot wrap my mind around your magic. I, I really doesn't I have can't. to do anything. I mean, we're. I don't know where we get that. Well, where the state, well, uh, well, the Constitution says, well, and the state has to say this, and unfunded mandates, and they do what they want, mm-hmm. whenever they want. You can go through all the magic rigmarole with the paperwork. When I was a young man, I did that. I was sucked into this thing. And I don't necessarily say that all of it is incorrect. There are some things to this stuff, right? Every little conspiracy has a little bit of truth to it. The thing is, it doesn't matter how your name is spelled. It doesn't matter what identification this or that that you have. You're either free or you're not free. You can get rid of all that. You can walk around with no identifications. You can walk around, you can drive around with no driver's license. And if they feel like it, you will go to jail. I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong about that. You I'm can pretty still sure, yeah, get thrown I'm in pretty the cage. Sure. Yep. Whether or not you have. In, in fact, uh, Mike Anderson, he got thrown in jail with no charge against him. Yeah. He wasn't being charged. In fact, the second, he wasn't the even second ar- time. Wasn't yeah, even he arrested. wasn't even arrested. They <laughs> had to stretch it. They didn't know uh, when they were putting well, him in the jail. They're like, well, what are, what are you in they, here for? They're like, oh, there's no charge. He's not arrested. He's just being held. He's just being indefinitely detained until we decide to let him go. And that's, you know, again, people who are all upset about the Indefinite Detention Act, they're the, actually, what is it, the official name, the National Defense Authorization Authorization Act. Uh, That includes that possibility for it to be legal for someone to be indefinitely detained. I mean, people who are all upset about that as if somehow they didn't already have that power. Hello. Yeah, no, it's just they have always had that power. Now they're just admitting that they that they're going to go ahead and do it anyway. And part of it has to do with that. That's what we were talking about in the very very beginning of the show today, from the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, the sovereignty movement derived the consent from the governed. The sovereignty movement's biggest problem is they're trying to fight a system in their system. It ain't going to happen. And well, it isn't going to happen if you go over here to Denny's and have your own little court trial. I mean, I could go sovereignty movement-wise on that whole Denny's court trial and pick that thing apart. I mean, they screwed up. I mean, according to the sovereignty movement, they screwed that thing up big time. So they didn't do it right. Well, they, they, they got to go to jail. So if you don't do everything correct, then it doesn't work. I mean, I, I've heard it all. Well, you just didn't do it right. That's why you went to jail. No, it's because they don't care. The only solution withdraw your consent 
going in there and going rawr, 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 doesn't do squat. You know, I, I like to take uh, arguments and, and kind of reduce it to the absurd, trying to uh, make it down to the, to the very very core of the issue. It's uh, reductio al absurdum, is I to, to throw out some next magic terms for you. Uh, in, in order to take this argument to its total of ridiculous level, mm-hmm. what if they told you, in order for us to keep you from going to jail, you must play hopscotch mm-hmm. every morning. And you say, well, I don't want to play hopscotch. That doesn't matter. In order for you to not go to jail, you must play hopscotch. Well, w- the, would you play hopscotch every morning? The uh, absurdity was, in the beginning of the call, your name being spelled out in full capital letters gives them jurisdiction over you. No. That's absurd. The jurisdiction comes from the end of a gun. <laughs> That's where it comes from. It doesn't matter how you spell your name. You can just say, I have no name, and they can send you a blank piece of paper. They'll still throw you in jail. Their power doesn't come from all these little antics and Illuminatis and all this kind of things. It's the, the gun. The Bilderbergs doesn't come up with a... Yeah, and there, there are this Illuminati, right? I don't doubt that. I know there's this Bilderberg group or whatever. Who cares? The fact of the matter is none of that matters. It's the gun. That's all that matters. Yeah, it's interesting. Quit giving your consent to the gun. The uh, the sovereignty movement doesn't seek to change the fundamental structure of the yeah, state. Exactly. No, they, they, they want their. Structure. They have no problem with the structure that was set up by the Constitution. They have basically no problem with it until uh, what the Fourteenth Amendment, right? Right. And that's really funny because it just totally misses it. It's like, well, everything's fine except the wrong people are in charge. It's basically the same thing as the Republican Party says, right? Republican Party says, well, the government's fine. The problem is we don't have the right people. What they don't understand is if they want to go down that road, the 11th Amendment was the first destruction. The 11th Amendment was a total kick right in the face of the American people. The uh, Georgia versus, uh, I don't even remember what it is. The the, one of the very first Supreme Court rulings where the, the Supreme Court, here you go, sovereignty movement, guys. The Supreme but that, this Court was a de jure Supreme Court, right? Right. right? Well, yeah. no, it was the United States Supreme Court. Oh, a de facto. De Supreme facto. Court. Oh. Judge, Judge oh. John Jay was chief justice. <laughs> so he said, I mean, basically, uh, Georgia lost. And the, the ruling was is that, this is for the sovereignty movement, guys, the people are the sovereigns. They have known other but to rule themselves, right? That's all that means. Because they kicked off the king, they didn't really have a government yet, so they were sovereigns under themselves. They had no one to be loyal to but themselves, no one to rule over but themselves. And then the states passed the 11th Amendment and said, nah, not so much. We are the rulers. So forget the 14th Amendment. It ended at the 11th Amendment, 1791 or 93? 95. 95? Yep. It was over then. It ended at the Constitutional Convention it when Washington lied about the uh, unanimous consent. The majority consent. But he, he said yeah. it was unanimous. and it, Yeah, exactly. Well, and if you if you look at it, the <laughs> very... Chisholm versus Georgia. Aaron just texted me. It was Chisholm versus Georgia. Excellent. I mean, I've read that thing so many times because it's really <laughs> fundamental. I read it because I think it's fundamental with the revolutionaries. What It spells out what they were fighting for. Go back even farther. The very, the, state the very Declaration of Independence. It's like you said, where it comes on and it talks about people deriving government and by the consent. consent of the governed. It goes right back. Withdraw your consent, people. This has been the Saturday morning wake-up call. Coming up on the Fox News. On the other side, we will begin Patriot's Lament. If you'd like to call in and be a part of that show, the number is 458-TALK. Or you can join us in the chat room, kfar660.com, on the World Wide Web. Online at patriotslament.blogspot.org. Hey, hey, this song is for us. (laughs) Welcome to Patriot's Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio, but we are streaming live on the Internet, which, incidentally, I found out this week is actually a series of tubes. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, no. You uh, uh, Online at kfar660.com, and then, of course, the show will be posted later on in the week on the Patriots Lament website, or the uh, the YouTube channel, which is radio... Well, that's still to be determined. <laughs> right. Uh, the, the YouTube channel is Radio Free. Radio, yeah, our, Radio Free Fairbanks. Our engineer's getting ready to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, this is the uh, first program of the new year of the program. That's right. This is second year technically the, the second year of the program now oh. that uh, we're moving on here. Obviously, we're going to become institutionalized here at some point, and people will stop paying attention because it's all so very 
old hat, right? Well, that's free food. <laughs> we get institutionalized, right? <laughs> yes. I like to say that Mr. David Giesel's here, and this is uh, technically could be his last. Uh, I think you're going to no, be here at least one more. I think time. I'm going to be here for one more show. Really? At least, at least one oh, more. Oh, at, some at point. least one more show, right? <laughs> live in studio. Definitely, definitely live in studio. This will be his <laughs> last time to join us. I mean, we're hoping he'll call in, but he's uh, cutting the banks here in a few Soon. days, and Soon. so. Every, yeah. We do I need? Uh, do I need? Here. Do I need? Uh, you might need our permission before we let you leave. Do I need to make sure I don't get my name in all caps when I go to Canada? It depends. Do you have a slave card? Well, does does all those rules apply in Canada? I don't know. Ooh, what I about in Me- what about in Mexico? Probably not in Mexico. What about okay, sweet. Even if they do, they probably don't care. <laughs> <laughs> what about in uh, China, where they have different characters? Can they capitalize oh, those characters? I don't know. I wonder how they get away with it then. You know what? I, I understand no that idea. if they take a picture of you, it actually captures your soul. Are they? I've heard that. Are the Chinese enslaved? <laughs> <laughs> some would say yes, some would say no. Maybe they're free. I don't know. That's an interesting thing. Maybe Chinese. I don't know if they can capitalize their names or not. They don't have social security cards. Then they're free. Done. They're done. <laughs> yep, let's go. I'm moving to China. Well, Where can I get my one foot by three foot square house? <laughs> okay, you guys are making uh, you're making references and making light of what some people think very seriously is the problem in America. Is the the yeah. reason why we've lost our freedom in some people's minds is because we have these programs that basically if you go in you apply for a social security number or get a social security card. I mean that's the, kind you know, of the whole sovereign citizen movement, like what Schaefer Cox was saying on the stand. So, uh, philosophically. They're like basically correct. Like the reason you're enslaved is because you ask for all this stuff, right? And nothing's free. But from a technical standpoint, it makes no sense because it turns out, I'm just going to throw this idea out there. 19 out of 20 people in the world don't live in America, right? But they do live in their own little farm jurisdiction and uh, they can't appeal to some sort of, you know, pre 14th Amendment constitution because guess what? None of the other countries of the world have a United States Constitution. So Doesn't Iraq? <laughs> well, they do. <laughs> it was written in the United States, but it was written in the United States for Iraq. Oh, and it's okay. different. It's different. It right? is different. So that only works within like this very tiny little world that, that you can limit yourself to by, by going along with that. Um, there are countries in the world where you don't have to get a driver's license to drive. You still have to pay the tax, man. Or they put you in a cage. Hmm. And it's it has nothing to do with the all caps letters. It has much more to do, like Josh was saying, the with power the, of the gun. The gun that gets pointed mm-hmm. at your at your face from the guy who knocks on your door when you don't pay. Basically, a good idea is to go somewhere where the guns are really small, or where you can pay off the tax guy. Well, you know, it, ah, and I like it's bad. You know, you, you pay off the tax guy no matter where you are, Dave. Whether whether you're sort here of. and 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 you submit your your payment mm-hmm. through the IRS, sort of. or, I think he's talking very, about a very it's very impersonal number. here. <laughs> it can be it can be much more personal other places. And then you can just go and put the the money actually in it's the guy's like in a, the guy's It's more hand. like paying a user fee or yeah. a tithe. Yeah, paying your tithe. But, you know, you know, but anyway, that's just one of the one of the things of the sovereignty movement that's loopy. Is what about everybody else in the world? What about all the other legal systems in the world? Like, all of their magic doesn't work in other jurisdictions, so therefore it's not real. Well, those Sorry. people aren't free. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't, never travel, ever, well, well, because you might uh, you might discover something. What is disturbing. what is freedom, though? I mean, one of, the, one of the things that we've tried to do on this show over the last year not is to try to, driver's license, to try to get people to, to really wrap their mind around being free and to give them specific action points of things that they can do to make it real in their own life. What is freedom? I mean, you, you just said not having a driver's license, really? Yeah, I, no. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing that out. I mean, because if you if you don't have a driver's license, you're going to get thrown in a cage. Let me, let me describe freedom free. to you, see. Freedom is never interacting with the financial system, being dirt poor because you refuse to do anything where you're going to have to get a bank account because you're going to have to have an all-caps name, <laughs> uh, scraping by with cash and junk you find on the side of the road, and not having a license to drive a car. That is freedom. That's that, that's your, Because you're think being, about your latitude of things you can do in your life. You can't afford to travel. You can barely afford to eat. You can't afford to keep your home warm in the winter. Sounds pretty free to me. 
Well, there there are people though that I mean I I can see I can see the, the little quirky smile on the edge of your <laughs> of your lips there, so I can tell that you're being sarcastic. But for for our listeners who maybe think are there are there are some people here in this community who actually really believe that they really and they might believe. actually if they feel more um, if they feel like they have more decision latitude in their life from doing that that's awesome then they actually are more free. Um, but for uh, for most of us, that's not really the case. Not so much. Yeah. Yeah, you, but even if you had all the money in the world and you had the freedom because you have the money to pay th- people off, you're still only as free as they want you to be. Look at people no. like uh, what, what, no, what was his name? You had all the money in the what world. What was his name? Wesley got, Snipes. You got another. Actually, if you had all the money in the world, on. it wouldn't be worth anything because uh, <laughs> yeah, what makes money right. valuable is, is the, the ability to trade with others. I got all right. Just so. stop, stop picking me apart philosophically, <laughs> David. You're, you're making my brain hurt. He's no, going to hold your feet to the fire today. It's the last day. He's what's the guy's name? Rah. Wesley Wesley Snipes, yeah, the actor yeah, yeah. that that basically decided that the government was taking too much of his money. So he stopped paying and he moved away from the United States. No, 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 no. He moved his money away from the United States. Oh, okay. Right? But he he stayed here. And didn't they? What they do? They arrested him for yeah, it. They, right? Yeah, they didn't like that. They, but he was here. They put him in a cage. Yeah. He sent because, his milk overseas. Because he didn't give his. Well, guess what? The he same thing has now just too. happened to another artist. This time a uh, a musician, Lauren Hill. You know who she is from yeah. the from the Fugees? Oh yeah. Had her own. Uh, um, Solo career after that? Mm-hmm. Well, she has just been put up on charges for tax evasion. Ventura a, was the one that boogied. What an in, yeah, and then that you're talking about now the fellow from Facebook. No, 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 Jesse, no. Ventura. Jesse Ventura. Oh, Jesse the Ventura. The, He's the one that uh, said, I'm done. I moved to Mexico. But yeah, I mean, that's coming back. He's not free, though. After you've done that is, a, is an interesting thing to do because uh, that's when, like, Wesley Snipes was in L.A. or whatever when they arrested him. He was in the U.S., if you go to Costa Rica or something like that, there's no extradition. So there's places you can go. I mean, and then you're not, you know, you could say, well, you're not free because you can't come back. Um, you know, true to an extent. So you got to make a choice. Yeah. There's, you well, know, there's no, all choices are exclusive. Uh, if you do something, you're not doing uh, any number of other things you could have been doing. But, uh, you know, you weigh that out. You say, what's going to give me, what's going to make me feel uh, like I'm in more con- more control of my own life, which is, I don't know. We could say that's what freedom is. I, I remember reading, it was a social Nietzsche, uh, one of the Soviet dissidents mm-hmm. who was actually physically thrown in prison. He was actually, his body was in jail. Right. And he said he had never been more free. Yeah, in his mind. Than when he was in jail. And he had no physical freedom, but he was actually, he had finally found this, this, this place of freedom in his mind. Now, I'm not saying that I would want to be thrown in jail. I like being free in my body, to, too. To experience freedom. I, exactly. I kind of like to be able to be free to walk across the street or to go for a run or whatever else. But at some point, even that, my, did, my, I don't have the freedom to run into the ocean. There are certain natural boundaries that stop me. Well, no, no, no. no they don't actually... What do you mean natural boundaries? Well, I mean, okay, I can't run from here to Japan. Oh, okay, that oh. kind of natural boundary. Uh, you right. know, I, I would have yeah, to yeah. get on a boat or on an airplane or something yeah. like that to go. And, and in order to do that... You have to get a slave card. I need to have my, my permission card, my slave card, mm-hmm. that proves that I belong to... Yeah, so in that case, America. you know, the slave card gives you more latitude, even though you have to have your name in all caps on it, which but is pretty But you could scary. get your slave card from another, from another master. Uh, you can, right. There's you know, other I've options. I've been for... doing some reading on that. There are a number of... Uh, countries, I think, what, the Dominican Republic? is that one man couldn't serve two masters. Dominica uh, and St. Kitts are the expensive ones. There's Dominican Republic, Paraguay. Um, there's some in Eastern Europe you can get just financially, just by paying. Yeah, you can or just, you can go somewhere else for a few years, or go somewhere you like, hang out. Uh, and put your them. money in a Swiss bank because they tell the U.S. government to... Yeah, once you get a... Sand, right, so that's another sand. thing that, that Wesley Snipes didn't do that you can do. If you have a, a foreign slave card, you can actually open your account as a uh, citizen of another country, at which point it's much harder to uh, track down well, there's the been property of yours stories. that you're trying to preserve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's recent stories where Swiss banks, where the United States government has come to them for two different uh, tax evasion charges, saying these two guys owe us this money, turn it over, and the Swiss bank said, yeah, not so much, we're not doing that. The whole reason for our existence is people trust us to protect their wealth, so we're not turning it over. Because basically it would be the end of the Swiss banking system. When was the last time Switzerland was invaded, by the way? Um, uh, for somebody year, oh, you know, do they, they have, have uh, to take, take what if you get a driver's license in Switzerland and it's all caps? How does that work? You can't own a gun? 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guys, oh, we wait. beat that horse to death. Yeah, they force you to have a gun there. Actually, they do. In Switzerland, you Jerks. must have a gun because you are automatically a part of the militia. So they must be more free than we are because everyone here says, well, as long as we got our guns, we got our freedom. They're forced to have a gun, so they must be more free than anyone in the whole world. Pretty Wouldn't close. It's super nice there. I've never I actually been to Switzerland. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's I, really good. But isn't it cold and they have snow there? No, no, not uh, <laughs> down by um, down by Geneva. It's I mean you're talking about like mid France, South France. They grow wine and or they grow grapes and stuff. Make wine down there. Super nice. Hmm. And they don't get invaded much. No. I mean, they have uh, natural defenses there, like mountains and. Well, you People know, uh, <laughs> actually, something that I've seen pointed out is, uh, besides the fact that all of the rulers have all their money there, right, no matter which side of the war they're on, uh, which certainly helps, they have no natural resources there. I mean, there's virtually none. There's not a lot of oil or mining or anything like that. And so, historically, there's been very little reason to uh, to invade. You know, you think if the if the Middle East was just sand, <laughs> do you think there would be any wars there right now? There, there weren't any wars there for a long, long right. time. Until, I mean, it was until this a, black goose started coming out of the ground. Right. I mean, before that, the, ma- the major wars that were fought there were regional. They were, they were basically just, I'm going to go kill your family. You're going to come yeah. kill my family. It wasn't these these major wars of other world powers coming in to try to take yeah, a piece of private it, private murder instead of yeah. instead of state sponsored murder. Yeah, it's just having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Family oh. feuds, stuff like that. Like yeah. The Hatfields and the McCoys, basically on a. Yeah, so actually Similar Switzerland, scale. I think actually Switzerland is more free than we are. Oh, uh, There's no uh, doubt about hands it. Hands down. Yeah. The, the only question would be, you know, is it the most? Well, that depends on like what your metric is. Right. But there's, there's no question. As far as state-sponsored government, state governments, yeah, they're probably, personal freedom's pretty good there. I actually saw a movie about a lot of the little, or a documentary about a bunch of the little countries around there, like Luxembourg and all those. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's pretty fascinating. One, of, This guy that was given the deal, he, he it was not political at all, but the one thing he said over and over and over was, the great thing about this country is they don't have any tax. Mm-hmm. The great thing about this country is they don't have, there's uh, like, I think there's eight or 11 of these little tiny countries yeah. in Europe. There's And it, all of them, no, the, the thing that was the same about all of them, they had no tax, no state tax that they didn't tax the people themselves. And guess what? The standard of living there was enormously ridiculous. They were all, all the citizens there, like the poor guy was the guy that had the 11,000 square foot hut, basically. I mean, that's the truth. These guys uh, have no taxes and the people are very wealthy and they don't mind that they have a prince or whatever it is. I mean, they don't have representative government there. They have princes. But they don't. The prince doesn't tax the people, and they're all yeah, just hanging. It's, really, it's like Monaco. Really fascinating. Yeah. That, that in, uh, yeah, that's actually yeah interesting thing in Europe, um, which isn't to say you know Europe is some amazing continent. It's it's pretty good, but it's not amazing. Um, <laughs> there's all sorts of little ones, and they're kind of sprinkled all over. You got Switzerland, Monaco, uh, Luxembourg, and there's little uh, there's a couple sovereign uh, city states too. Uh, San Marino. Yeah. In in Italy, yeah, I'd leave Vatican City out just because, but that's just my opinion. But anyway, um, there's all these little like kind of remnants from uh, when you had when you had competing feudal jurisdictions. Some of them are still there, and yeah, they're tax free. So guess where all the money accumulates? Why do you think money would accumulate in places where it doesn't get penalized? But um, how do how do those governments uh, function without uh, taxes? Dave? Yeah, so like Monaco is a great example of that. You know, you just have basically money just pouring in. Um, all these people uh, from Germany and whatnot, claiming uh, residency, like permanent residency in Monaco, so they don't have to pay taxes. And so when you have super wealthy people moving somewhere and they really like nice stuff, it's not a problem to pay for, you know, the roads and the harbor and stuff like that. I think the harbor fee in Monaco is 25,000 bucks. So if you want to, if you want to bring your boat into the harbor, you got to pay 25,000 bucks. Do you think they have any trouble maintaining that harbor with that kind of user fee? I don't think so. I don't think so. And so if you if you have a uh, favorable jurisdiction like that, you're going to attract capital. I mean, this is like super basic economics. Money flows where it's treated well. And uh, so you don't need to pill for everybody <laughs> to uh, to pay for stuff that nobody wants, right? It's very clear what people want and what they're willing to pay for, and they have the money to do it. Not a problem. So Yeah, but they're it, backwards. It's fun how that works out. I mean, uh, you could throw Singapore out as an example. Yeah. Of course, Singapore is, you know, they have some pretty draconian... Uh, laws about 
plants and stuff that you might want to put in your body. Um, like if you put a plant in your body that they say might hurt you, just to make sure you don't do it again, they kill you. But <laughs> setting that aside, setting that aside, right? It's a small, it's this little island. You know, it's mostly just the, the city and uh, super small jurisdiction and massively prosperous per person because they have, uh, you know, a high degree of latitude in, in financial and career freedom and all these things. And so it's a hugely attractive place for, um, you know, smart, successful people to go or people who even just want to uh, better themselves. You know, somebody who's poor, who's gotten educated, if you have a like a useful degree in engineering or science or something like that, uh, Singapore's like, come on in. In Hong Kong, are they still kind of like that? Or? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my buddy Luke says they're the last true free market. Really? Yep. Yeah, he says that place is a blast. Just because of that, too. I mean, if you want to start a business there, you go there and start a business and make money. And uh, and they're glad about it. Now, Seth King, who we've had on this show, mm -hmm. uh, runs runs Daily Anarchist. He sold a bunch of his black and yellow flags over there. Oh, really? Yeah. So That's pretty sweet. That tells you something. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, I, 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 it's very, very hard for somebody who has been so indoctrinated as I was as a child and the idea that the government is here to help you, that the government is only here to do these specific limited tasks with the consent, of course, of the government, all, all the stuff they were talking about from the Declaration Whatever of that Independence, means. Uh, that, that somehow the, you know, and, and we've been told over and over and again that we have the best form of government ever. This is the best place on earth. This is the freest place on earth. You know, you you may not you may not like things here in America, but it's better than anywhere else. And and you you hear it over and over again. And it's especially if you haven't experienced the governments in other places around the world, well, you, you don't know any or better. Experience the absence. I mean, when I um, usually when I travel, I try to avoid the governments of the places I'm traveling to. Mm -hmm. I mean, generally, you don't want to interact with the government wherever you go. And you, you have to at the border, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like a slightly revealing experience. I'll throw out Switzerland. Switzerland was the easiest uh, passport stamp, like by far. You know, like get off the plane, walk by. There's no line because they actually have the right number of people to to service the line. Um, and threw my thing out. The guy didn't even ask where I was going or what I was doing. Stamp, have fun. See ya. That was it. No questions, no nothing. Um I, I did. I'll do you one better. When I went into the Czech Republic, yeah, they didn't even look at the passport. That's awesome. They didn't even stamp it. Even they didn't care. Wow. Yeah. I walked in. They were like, "Hey, have fun. If you want to come here, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, great. So I mean, so that gives you a little preview. But it's the absence. I mean, a lot of these places you go, it's the absence of all the stuff you have to deal with here that you notice. It's you know, you do something and coming and back. You're not like looking over your back, like, oh, you know, am I going to get coming back to the United States mm -hmm. from the Czech Republic? There was a long line. Oh, yeah, right. There was the, there were the questions that I had to answer. There were the declarations that I had to make. I felt less free <laughs> coming back to the United States after my visit to the Czech Republic. This was And this was four years ago. And this was before they started raping you when, you, when, rape. when, you, when, you, when you fly. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, another thing that doesn't happen pretty much anywhere except for uh, the United Kingdom. The X-ray scans and all that. Yeah. Um, apparently only the really free countries give you a little bit of an x-ray scan or a uh, free sexual encounter when you go through the airport. Because, again, like, you know, 19 out of 20 people in the world, not part of their travel experience. <laughs> <laughs> what fools. I know. They don't know how good it is to give your consent. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a text from, uh, from a friend of mine, and, and we were talking about what freedom is. And he threw out a little Lou Rockwell quote here. Uh, freedom is not a public policy option and is not a plan. It is the end of politics itself. Perfect. Which is interesting. Yeah, it cuts right down to it. The politics being the question of who does what to whom, according to uh, Lenin. Or the consent issue where uh, the govern we're governed by consent. Well, this is how our consent goes. Do you give consent? Well, click, click, the gun at the head. <laughs> yeah, I do give my <laughs> consent. <laughs> I mean, that's what yeah. our consent comes from. That's basically what it, what it boils down to. I mean, think about it. You, you, those of you who want to travel and don't want to be raped, good luck. Well, good you luck. Can drive certain places, not so much here in Alaska. You can't go very far. No. But they'll put a stop to that too. I mean, we can't have people not driving far, around. Yeah. Not 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 long until I mean, they've already it's already happened in the lower 48 in Tennessee, mm -hmm. where the TSA 
has it put up roadblocks and stopped people oh, yeah. on the road. There was a uh, there was a guy. What was it? This week or last week? There was a guy in the Senate who was freaking out that only like five percent of the TSA's budget is oh, for yeah. surface travel. And he I was a Republican. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, they need to be spending, you know, at least most people travel on the surface, so their budget needs to reflect that. So it was a big justification to jack their budget. They did up. get another uh, twenty-two million, I think, to ramp up their Viper program, though, so they can go do more roadside um, rapes. Cool. Yeah. You guys have fun with that. All right. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> yeah. I want you to stay in contact with me, Dave, because at some point I might want to come and join you wherever you end up. I always uh, likes to rub it in. Just, just to be beard. out of the country. I, you know, we we we've, we've kind of been all over the place uh, during the start of this show here today. Do we have a theme yet that we're that we're uh, kind of narrowing in on? Apart from uh, looking at what is freedom. I, yeah, I mean, we're, it's kind of an open question, you know, because it's a to different people it means different things. Yeah. And um, you know, to somebody in the sovereignty movement, it might mean. You know, getting rid of all the paper that has their name in all caps. They might find all caps to be really scary. Uh, so, you know, so good for them. Uh, for me, it's it's not that. And for most of the people I know, mm, it's it's not that. And so if you and, you know, it's not even, you know, which flag is waving out in front of my building. Most people actually don't care about that. They're just supposed to. It's like a social cost thing. Um, so if you boil it down to what people really care about and you're more honest about the question and you broaden your search uh, you can you can reach some different conclusions about uh, how you can achieve you know the freedom you desire in your own life, what whatever I, freedom that no. may be, financial, social, you know maybe you're a, a pothead or something, whatever, right? Who cares? Well, uh, but there's there's <clears throat> other places in the world, you know none of them are great. You're not going to have absolute control over you know everything in your life everywhere. But uh, well, even if you stayed answers. stayed right where you were and didn't go anywhere else, mm-hmm. what makes you free? It is not whether or not, and in my mind, it's not whether or not you have somebody else has your name on a piece of paper, because you know what they can do that without your consent mm-hmm. and without your knowledge. Right. And that doesn't make you a slave to them because they've got your name on a piece of paper somewhere. However, if you act like they do, if when they come to your house and say, "We're going to search your house," if you bow down in front of them and lick their feet as they go by, you ain't free, brother. 458 Talk is the number. We're coming up on the Fox News here at the bottom of the hour. You can feel free to join us in the chat room, KFAR660.com. All right, welcome back to Patriot's Lament right here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd, the trained chimpanzee in here pushing the buttons. On the other side of the council from me today, we've got Dave Giesel, the arachno-capitalist or just simply an anarcho-capitalist we last what was it last week we were introduced to the term arachno-capitalist just yeah, for fun like to he says he's tra- spinning like webs to, of his economic future to though. trade in spiders instead of cash money is and he catches his prey on the web <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right also uh, from bighorn enterprises one of our sponsors of the show it's uh josh bennett good morning josh good morning and of course our other sponsor just to give it a little shout out is far north tactical over there at the corner of eighth and lacy where basically you know what it doesn't matter how free you are if you can't protect yourself right yeah, he's yeah. not here. He hopefully will be coming in from now on, but uh, he's putting to action what we talk about. He's making cash money. He's making cash money, going out there and working today. Uh, all right, gentlemen. You know, it, it's interesting. Good job, Someone, Aaron. Yeah. One of the themes that we keep on hitting on today, this issue of uh, people having power over you and whether or not your name is in somebody else's book or whether or not you have a slave card from this master or that master, <laughs> uh, you know, there, there's an interesting part that I, I'm kind of curious where you guys are coming from on this. It's something that I hear from uh, time and again from people like Alex Jones and some of the other uh, conspiracy people out there, that somehow all of this is tied to the mark of the beast, you know, throwing out some of this eschatology this, this future events stuff from a, a, a particular brand of Christianity that believes that we're coming up on a uh, an end of the world scenario. Uh, how do, Get how in do... line with everybody else who's been wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Who has time for that? It's come up a few times over the last thousand years. Well, isn't the I mean, but isn't my understanding though the mark of the beast is that you can't get it accidentally. You can't have somebody go and put your mark on you. You have to submit to it. 
in order for it to be a, a really valid issue, right? It's not like, oh, dang it, I got the mark of the beast. Oh, no. You wake up one day? Like, ah! I, I mean, people that are concerned about because I got a social security yeah. card. Yeah. Oh, man, I've already got the mark. No. You got the mark, the precursor to it all. It, but right there. Isn't that the issue, though? Is it submission? And that, to me, is what ties into this issue of what is freedom. Are you submitting to someone else? It's consent. It's giving your consent. I mean, we just talked about the very first... Well, that other completely the other show no. was uh, the only reason it happens is because we give them our consent. I want to I mean, throw an idea out here. Uh-oh. We'll just play it with this. Oh, in the boy. Here we go. Here we go. I'll hit my bat. It's really hilarious hearing Alex Jones talk about freedom because nobody is a bigger slave than that guy. <laughs> in his mind, I mean, the prison that guy has created for his own mind is like makes any maximum security prison look like like a preschool. I mean, the perpetual fear that that guy is in about everything, like literally everything, uh, is unbelievable. And uh, if that's freedom, I want no part of it. No thanks. Sad. No No. joke. Four, five, eight, talk. All of our lines are on hold. If you're outside of our uh, immediate area code, please uh, tack on a 907 and submit to the telephone companies. Four, five, eight, talk. The number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Alex Jones, GMO, New World Order. (laughs) (laughs) Alex, thanks for calling. Hey, no problem, brother. Anyway, hey, man, so we're talking about freedom, and we're, you know, I'm listening to you guys talk about what you have to go through in these hoops, you know, that you have to jump through to be part of the system. Well, here's a perfect example. So you have to submit. You have to submit to, to earn money to be part of the system. And so here's the deal, right? So I work somewhere, and... I can understand a private enterprise saying, you know, hey, we're going we're gonna to drug test you to come to work here. And that's totally okay with me. But what I do on my off time shouldn't concern anybody. And that's just another part of freedom. So what I'm allowed to do is get off of work and go to a bar and get drunk or, or do something that gets out of your system in three days. But to be an American and to say, oh, I, I, you know, I partake in a little marijuana, well, that right there will cost you your, your job, which in, in, it really will cost you everything that you have. So, you know... You have to submit to the system to be part of it. And it's just, you know, it gets ridiculous when companies overstep their boundaries and get involved in your personal life. And, you know, the government does the same thing. That's why government stopped drug testing. They initially drug test you to get in a government job. But once you have a government job, you don't get drug tested. And the unions will fight that with you. I'm just saying, it's a little ridiculous. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting interesting point. A lot of uh, countries that have more lax laws about the plants that you are allowed to put in your body, um, because the mindset is different there. Uh, the companies themselves have different uh, thoughts about that. And, of course, the insurance companies in those jurisdictions think about it differently, too. Um, here, I know to get uh, certain federal grants and state grants, you have to drug test. Uh, there's a company in, in California a friend of mine works for, and um, they basically survive by rent-seeking. I mean, it's a big – they get all these subsidies and stuff. And uh, they went to get a new subsidy, and so the CEO comes in and is like, we're going to have a drug test policy so we can apply for this federal grant. And every single one of the employees was like, well, you're not going to have any employees after the first round, so <laughs> let's dance. Well, and, that comes down to insurance, you know, because they have to keep their insurance low. So what yeah. they can do is they can preach this culture to you. Like, say you work up north or something, they can tell you, oh, well, listen, we're a safety culture and this and that. But what they're doing on the other hand is they'll feed you, you know, the, the, the most fatty, high fatty, worst food you can possibly yeah. eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but they want you to be safe. They, you know, they want you to be safe. So what do they really care about? And what they care about is their bottom line. Yeah. And the bottom line is about dollars and dollars move the economy and it's really about the ducats where's the money coming from you know and they mm-hmm. want to tax this stuff just look at california or whatever and look this is here's the deal ron paul kind of said it the best that i've ever heard it said it was well look if we legalize heroin tomorrow are you going to run down to 7-eleven and start shooting heroin no because you know better and it's not about it's not about you know controlling everything it's about education so that's where we should start and if we really just educated our public on what's healthy for you what you need to be putting in your body really we don't need to be banning 16 ounces of soda what we need to be doing <laughs> is educating you on why you don't need to be drinking 16 ounces of soda wait Look wait wait the, you know wait 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 thing, though, it's I, just education of I, what you need to do but whose responsibility is that education but really, is it, is mean, it the, exactly. should the government be education, or, no, no, or shouldn't it be the parents? Nice. I mean, just yeah. look. You, you can look at our TV. Look at what they put on. I mean, look at the ads these big companies run. And, you know, we have these things like, oh, it's a regulatory commission and all this BS. Well, what it really boils down to is 
all these people are just out for money. So they're going to pump this stuff for your kids if you let your kids watch TV, which I'm not saying that you should or you shouldn't, but these are all choices that you make. And what's being advertised to them is just, I mean, you know, nobody should tell you what to do. But somebody, they should never ban anything. There shouldn't be any more laws. There should just be more education. And education doesn't mean it should just say, hey, we got information. You can take it if you use it if you want. But this is America. Do what you want. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole, uh, you have a responsibility and, and freedom are kind of, you know, two sides of the same coin. And so when you remove the responsibility with a bunch of laws or whatever, you remove the thinking, right? So there and, is there, no... and, there, and there are people who would go out immediately down to the 7-Eleven and shoot up heroin mm-hmm. because because it's it's available to them just because they've been taught I, I hate to, that I they hate can't to break do this it. To you, Steve. I hate to break this to you, but... Uh, all those drugs are highly available already. Oh, yeah, you can go down snap. to your doctor and get that. You go to your pharmacy and get that. But listen, that's it. New World Order, Alex Jones, population control. You got, <laughs> right. you got to understand, if you're going to run out and start shooting heroin, well, we don't need you around. Uh, and obviously, you're not contributing. You so do what you would like Correct. to do. You want to get diabetes and, and you know what I'm saying? You can't walk and do your job. Well, get diabetes and don't walk and do your job. And we don't need you contributing. And we don't need you in our society. And you can pay for your own health care. And we are not going to pay for anything because we can't mm-hmm. afford it. So we're not going to get involved in any wars. We're not going to get involved in nothing because we can't take care of our own self at the moment. Yeah. That's what it really is. Mm-hmm. The industry that I'm in is very heavily regulated. And the drug side is very heavily regulated. We uh, are required to give drug tests and have random drug tests in the option is either don't be in business, or as I was told by a DOT agent at one time, or you will go to jail. Ridic- so, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, like the owner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would go to jail if I didn't follow these certain... I mean, like, if someone went through the cracks, even, or if someone didn't go to their... Um, not the mandatory, but the random drug test. If someone missed that, I love random drug tests. I'm on the yeah. line for it. I, I go well, to jail. Yeah. So, oh, so I cold. work on the slope. I get, I get, I get drug tested all the time. Yeah. But you, here's the problem. Now you see these people that work up there. What, what are they on? They're not. I mean, come on. What are they on? They're on drugs. But where are they getting their drugs from? From the legal drug suppliers. Mm-hmm. They're getting them from their doctors. From the, from the pharmacies. They're getting them from these pain management people. And this is the kind of drugs that they're on. And so the, what I, you're I, I, doing is, is you're taking people off of. Oh, I want to smoke a joint when I'm home or whatever. And now what they're doing is, oh, well, you look here, take these hard drugs, get addicted, get put in the system, get some Alex Jones in you, because now you're in prison. And our prisons are private. It's just like <laughs> one big thing, and it's all about the money. It's all about the stuff. I had a uh, friend who was in the Air Force doing drug war stuff, and uh, years ago, and he had a he had a little moral conflict, so he quit. But uh, he said it was really funny because they would they would go on these super long shifts. And so everybody who was there, you know, fighting against drugs or whatever, was totally addicted to um, anti-sleep meds. Like, like Adderall or yeah, something. Yeah, like absolutely, like, you know, uncategorically, massively addicted to that stuff. And the only reason they got addicted to it was because of these super long shifts that they were supposed to be on in the Air Force to, you know, fight the drug war because drugs are bad for you. And so uh, <laughs> most of the people, you know, there's all sorts of these terrible side effects from the prescription drugs that are worse than, you know, the plants that you can consume. Oh, honest. Yeah, and, honestly. Uh, and he said it's just, you know, the, the irony of that was just t- totally perfect. It's beautiful because what you can do is you can get off of work. If, say, you work up north or something, you can go to the bar, get drunk, you know, ruin your family life, do all these horrible things. You know, what they're doing is they're, they're saying, look, man, if you don't enjoy life because you're not just high on life and you just want to exp- do something else, well, what you can do is things get out of your system in three days or, or you can go to the bar and do this. But what you can't do is, is do something that grows from the earth because, you know what, that's uh, – it's just like it's so frustrating. It just makes me think all bust. <laughs> but what you can do is go down and pay, you know, a doctor – 300 bucks, get your medical marijuana card from the state of Alaska, and then, you know, go ahead and smoke your pot. But it's not just about pot. It's about everything in general. And, you know, it's just about who's really getting paid. And it's the insurance companies. It's, it's the big business that has to force you to do the drug test. The DOT who mandates him to drug test his employees. It's everybody. But where do Somewhere all those... Somewhere along the line, somebody's getting paid. Think, think about it, too, though. Where do all of these anti-drug laws come from? Don't they come from people who maybe maybe they're high on life themselves or maybe they have some kind of a moral inhibition where they, they don't want somebody else to be enjoying a, a particular plant or, or whatever else? I mean, you look at prohibition with alcohol and how well that worked for the entire country that came from that same same place as the anti-drug people the the exact same moral place of we think that's wrong 
and we are going to make it so that you can't do it because we don't want to do it. What happens when you take the guns away from the good guys? Who has the guns? The bad guys. What happens when you take the drugs away from the, you know, the people? Who's going to have them? The black market. And everybody's going to be able to get what they want because that's how the world operates. So what you need to do is you need to educate people. You don't need to regulate. You need to educate. You need to tell people what they can and can't do in a manner that, that, that everybody understands and doesn't object to. You say, look, man, you can, you can do heroin all you want, but what's going to happen to you if you do heroin? This well, is what's going to happen to your body, X, Y, Z, response. Exactly. Yeah, but there's no That's money in that. Do. There's no money in that. There's no money in the state for that. I but mean, the only reason you have regulations against all this stuff that we're talking about is because of money. That's all yeah, it is. Exactly. It look at Iran into... Contra. Look at all these people yeah. bringing the the crack into L.A. Look at you know this freeway Rick Ross guy who was transporting crack for the CIA. These are the things that really happen behind the scenes that they don't talk about. You know, this I think it was like Reagan era, you know, drug dealing going on. You know, and they ask him, and he's like, I don't know anything about. This. Of course they don't. You know, because <laughs> it's just like the Fast and Furious. Yeah, we give we give guns to the Mexicans. It's like, come on, man. But then again, you don't even need Fast and Furious for that. Go. You can, you can, like you said earlier, you can get you can prison yourself with this whole. I'm going to worry so much about it, mm-hmm. and then become Alex Jones. So. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for the call, and yeah. make sure that you free yourself, brother. Four five eight talk <laughs> is the number. Good morning, Who's Jones this? on Alex. Is that me? That might be you. Does that sound like uh, Aaron Bennett there? Yeah, it's Aaron Bennett. Hey, thanks I for calling in. Question to point at Josh mainly. Uh, oh, take no. me a second here to set up the question, though. So you look all through history, it, it, liberty's progressive, right? I mean, you that society you had with the Egyptians to uh, monarchy, and you had Winston, I want to talk about a yeoman, and essentially the yeoman's liberty is granted by the state. I mean, all liberties, regardless of the progression of liberty, it's still granted by the state, right? Even the society we have today, the freest society in the world, is still granted by the state, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we've never liberated ourselves from the state, is what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. And you look at the Egyptian times, you had slavery all the way to um, the 1800s. There's still slavery, right? I mean, talking 100 years ago, there were still people in bondage. And we had to, um, through the state, finally, re- the state protected the right of slavery, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Fred Scott. Was- the state also yeah, the Supreme, our own United States Supreme Court basically upheld slavery. Yep. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, also the uh, oppression of women, correct? Yep. And, it, and we had to change the state's view on those things to finally see liberty for what it was for women and for um, men to be in bondage, right? And wow. it, it <laughs> wow. isn't, isn't the same true for. Um, children. I heard Tom Woods and Stefanoff was both addressed this, and neither of them obviously had an answer. Just said, well, the same way that we reached the slavery question, the same way we reached the uh, question of women would have to be the same way we reached uh, the question of children. So right now, he says that a child's an adult at 18, right? right. The reason the, the question we pointed to Josh is he has gobzillion children. And he believes in liberty, I mean, to the utmost. I mean, that's more than obvious. I have three boys of my own. I guess the question in my mind is, what? where do children's liberty come into play? I mean, the state says it's 18. You know, the Bible basically points to once they're resisting the whipping, they're obviously, you're counterproductive, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so um, since all liberty is progressive, I mean... The liberty that we're talking about right now, it's not even for our generation or for them, probably. But ultimately, that's where it has to end up, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what Molyneux says, too. It has to end up in a stateless society because that's where ultimately it can't go anywhere else. People will end up there regardless. Mm -hmm. Well, some of the questions can't be answered right now because it has to be looked through the lens of the state. As long as we have that lens yeah. to look through, then there's no true answer. It also presupposes that people stop sticking their nose in other people's business. Aha. And, and telling you, Aaron, you cannot do X, Y, or Z because I don't like it. And therefore, I'm going to get my friends together, and we are all going to force you to stop doing whatever this thing is that we've decided you can't do. Some kids right, might but be I'm, ready I'm trying, to go when I'm they're... I'm trying to point that question directly at Josh because um, his, he made the statement that his children interact um, much better with adults. They see children as being immature. They're ba- he basically 
said in a nutshell that his kids are adults, right? So at what point does he say, okay, well, whatever choices they want to make is their own? Well, they are, uh, I wouldn't say that they're completely adults. I'd say that they uh, <laughs> sometimes they're not at all. But when they, actually every decision they make right now is their own decision. There's just, uh, they learn consequences <laughs> to their decisions right now. But ultimately, every decision they make is their own. Right, but isn't, Some kids isn't, that, the same, isn't that the same stance the state pretty much takes? They come back to us and say, well, every decision you make is your own. The consequences are your own. But you're not 100% capable, so we have to regulate X, Y, and Z. Hmm. Well, I guess when a kid's ready to move out and he, he thinks he can get it on, on on his own, then have at it. I mean, some kids probably are ready. I know I was ready to move out when I was pretty young, but I was whatever. I had a business established and yada, yada, yada. Aaron moved out when he was pretty young. He was fine. Some kids probably aren't ready to move out till they're 20. Who knows? I don't think there's this age 18 where, well, ah, I think it's a decision that uh, right. and I'm not partly with the kids. I have I know. three boys of my own. I'm asking the question. So I guess that maybe the answer to that question is when a kid leaves, then, then he's, he's free. Yeah, Rothbard talked about that. In, uh, he threw out an idea for it in The Ethics of Liberty. He, he was talking about uh, homesteading yourself, right? So, like, like, obviously, when a kid's born, they can't meet their own basic needs for quite some time, and then they don't develop rational thought and things like that. So, sometimes they never do, but if they grow up with parents who uh, interact with them, you know, to the maximum extent in a rational way, um, instead of just saying, oh, because I said so, you know, explaining, talking to them like adults, they will tend to become adults much better than if you if you treat them like children the whole time. Even then, and, though, I mean, at some point, I mean, when they first come out, they do not understand. Correct. So this speech. is, a, this I mean, there's, is there's what, this transition. Yeah, so this is what he talks about. It's in uh, the Ethics of Liberty. And he says, you know, you, you give them the maximum uh, decision-making authority that they demonstrate the ability to use. And when they decide to leave, uh, he calls that homesteading themselves. Uh, then they uh, then they're on their own, and you you never own them. You have, the parent never owns the kid. You're you have, you're in a caretaker role, where you're responsible for the kid's well being, but you don't you know it's not your kid. Um, you will do what I say because I right. And if and if you raise if you raise a kid that way, because you know mm-hmm. why do I have to do this? Because why do I have to uh, listen to my teacher? Or whatever? Because they're your teacher. Those are those are bad answers. And uh, kids who grow up in that environment, what are they going to think of the state? Because. Because. Because is going to be good enough. And the responsibility for their actions, they're never going to, the causality between, you know, actions and consequences is going to be divorced. It's like, why did I get in trouble for this? Well, because. It was bad. And, and people want to wonder what happened to freedom in the United States. Look at how many parents have completely pushed, pushed away from themselves that idea of even... Resp- taking any responsibility for their own yeah, kids, so this, and they push it off on the state. They they push it off on the. On, well, know, this is what Aaron's talking schools. about with uh, you know freedom. And Molyneux talks about this a lot. Mm-hmm. Freedom being extended to children, or the idea of that, right? So I mean, decision making authority not coming at some arbitrary age, but coming when when they are ready to, and people raising their kids with that idea in mind. Instead of raising your your kid like, oh, this is some dumb kid, and I'm going to have to tell them everything that they have to do until they're 18. Uh, instead of raising them that way, it's like this is a this is a human being, and I'm going to treat them. You know, we have we have the term adult and children. That's probably a bad delineation. Right. Okay. And I, I guess that was my my whole point was um, I know you don't have any kids, Dave, but um, as a parent, you tend to push upon your kids that they have to obey just because you are an authority over them. You're bigger no than they are. <laughs> it's easier. Yeah. Well, and, and to, to a certain extent, though, I mean, that's how it has to start, because if you, if you cannot reason with an infant. Yeah, but you don't need, I mean, hitting an infant or something like that no, would be I'm not, absurd. I'm not saying but that's that, what I'm saying. But you're but bigger you're than not using, you pick, You're not you using them force. Up. You're not using force. You're providing them with things that they cannot provide for themselves, right? And that's different. Right. Uh, that's like if, you know, some guy doesn't have any legs and he's in a wheelchair, you know, you you might help him out by pushing him around. Right. It, it, you don't 
you know, chastise the guy. Oh, pff, grow some legs, right? <laughs> you, you know, you don't do that with your kids either when they're really young. But when your kids get old enough and develop language, which this happens very quickly and very naturally, Molyneux has a whole bunch of talks about this, and kids being able to recognize intent. Like kids at eight months old can recognize intent when they're shown like puppets who, they're shown a puppet who treats another puppet uh, poorly, and then they're shown shown a puppet who treats another puppet well. They'll actually have an adverse reaction to the uh, the lying puppet and a positive reaction to the one who was more honest. And they don't they don't you know understand language or reason then, but apparently they do. Mm-hmm. They just can't express it. And so if you don't if you don't treat kids in the same way that you would treat adults or a similar way to the maximum extent that they're ready, you're going to end up with uh, adult children, which is, is largely exactly what we have, what we have today. And right. you know what? You, in terms of understanding language, it is true. I mean, we we teach our kids sign language. Because they can do those gross motor movements. Oh, yeah. Like for please and thank you and more and out and, you know, those basic kinds of requests that instead of sitting there in their chair going, ah, they can actually make the sign for more Mm -hmm. or make the sign for out or make the sign for please. But they can do those gross motor movements. You can see that they obviously understand what they want to communicate to you. You know? Yep. All right, we're running out of time. Thanks, Aaron, for the call. 458-TALK is the number. We're going to see if we can squeeze in one or two more here before the end of the show. Good morning. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, go ahead. Uh, just on Alex Jones, uh, I don't know if he's in a prison or not. He's probably laughing all the way to the bank with his tabloid radio. It's kind of an absurd thing. But, I mean, there is the possibility, the good possibility of one world government. But that seems like all he harps on his whole show and about the mindset of the Bilderbergers and how they're going to want to eat us and replace us with androids. Anyway, it's, I guess there's a market market for that. But uh, I wish he'd concentrate or, or talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts stuff that we can actually do something about. For instance, he should have pointed out that Obama and the Communist Party USA were trying to pass through the Paycheck Fairness Act just a few days ago. And uh, luckily, he should have reported on the good news that uh, it was voted down in the Senate by a vote of 52 to 47 on uh, June 5th. And that Lisa is so, good news. Yeah, huh? interesting. Uh, you talked about Alex Jones and the One World Government, and uh, that actually is an impossibility. It is not possible. Well, and hopefully anybody, it's not possible. anybody who reads, you know, any super basic economics, right? As as you consolidate uh, basically a business into a larger and larger structure, it loses the ability to price uh, goods internally. And um, Rothbard talks about this in uh, Man, Economy, and State. And the same thing happens with communism or any sort of uh, controlled economy. This is what happened in the Soviet Union. They lost the ability to do any sort of pricing within the government structure, which was the entire economy. And when you can't price things within that, when you don't have internal pricing, you know, how much should steel be, right? And then how much should a car be and all these things. It was bureaucrats deciding that. You have a huge misallocation of resources, and you have a massive economic breakdown, and then the power is gone. The, eventually, the uh, the rulers will have no power. Uh, Mises talked about this, too. It was the, it was the um, economic calculation problem of socialism. And so the possibility of a one-world government is zero. It's none. It is not a possibility. Um, it doesn't matter if they consolidate all the money into one thing. They will never have control over 7 billion people. They can't, because as soon as they... They, as soon as they tried to do it, they would start losing so many resources that there'd be no power to enforce. It's a self-defeating, uh, it's a self-defeating strategy. We were talking about that in the break. In Europe, you know, the the EU is breaking down, and Alex Jones is, you know, pooping all over himself, <laughs> talking about how a one-world government's going to come in now any second. Ah! And uh, and uh, what's happening? Spain, there's a separatist movement yep. in Spain that's gaining a huge amount of momentum. Belgium, a couple uh, like a year ago, voted to split in half. Right, the Greeks want out of the EU. Josh was saying the Dutch have voted to get out of the EU. It's breaking apart. Uh, the, the and that's only Europe. Right. And and Mises wrote about this 100 years ago. He totally laid it out. He's like, this is this is the problem. This is why socialism can't and never will work logically. It just never will. No matter how loud Alex Jones yells about it. One world government, not a possibility. Zero possibility. Well, I, I hope that's right. But there. No, no, to... you don't have to hope it's right. Well, it is absolutely irrevocably true. But there it's was. totally true. What, so you don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, Randy, well, what makes you think that there will be a one-world government? But, well, here's why. Because when we look back at history, look at the Roman Empire of the known world for several hundred years. There was like a one-world government of the known world. And what worries me, why I think it could be a possibility, is because of solid-state electronics, video cameras <laughs> that were not even in existence at that time. And if but, they ever get but, a monopoly on chips and things like that, you know, just factory 
fact, uh, government factories that churn out this stuff, they can watch us and actually if no, no, they can't. The one they go. can't. If they had all the stuff, right, uh, they would have no yeah. means of calculating how it should be used. Well, right? the Soviet Oil Union lasted for a long time. No, yes, was a horrible and it only. But how 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 wealthy were people there? Did their wealth increase or decrease over the course of the Soviet Union? Oh, I agree. It, it fell dramatically. The, the, the command and control. Slaves. The command and control over the people also fell dramatically. And the only reason it could last so long is because they could look at prices outside of the Soviet Union in the free market to determine their own internal pricing. I would suggest reading some Mises and uh, getting a little basis for that. There's zero <laughs> probability of a one world government. Zero. All right. Uh, in terms of action points today and, and, and ask that question for yourself what is freedom yeah how, how do you define yourself as free when will you know that you're f- truly free thanks for a fun year dave oh yeah it's been good year and a, and a week year yeah. and two weeks <laughs> all right uh, stay in contact yeah, with us here we're going to have you on at least one more time before you are officially gone